Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Thank you, God. We give you glory in this place, Lord. Woo! We magnify you in this place. Uh, Y'all came to sing today. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, God. Oh, oh Lord.
how good it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, how good it is. Amen. Oh, how good it is. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you. Give me you. Give me you. It's me. It's me. 
with me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, yes, God. crying out to you. Have you been there, church? It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. So give me you. Yes, God. Yes, God. That's all I ask for, God. Yes, give God. me you. Yes, That's all I ask for, Jesus. Yes. It's yes, me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. Crying out to you, Lord. Yes. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. Just give me you. Give me you, Lord. Is that your prayer today, church? Yes, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. to God that song really touched me it's me oh Lord I'm crying out <laughs> to you I had experience of that in a close way over the last years of my life but just recently, I was calling out to God continuously. <laughs> and I didn't mind doing so. And he was always true and just to his word. Yes, yes. And he answered yes. my every call according to his purpose and his will. That's what I love about God. Come on now. He loves me so much on, that preacher. he is able to respond to my life and where I'm at in ways that is just right for me and does not go against his word or his will. That is how powerful my God is. Come on, in say our it, church. God. Come on, say it. Amen. Giving honor to God and the house of my love and the memberships and Pastor Lavelle, who is resting today Amen. and justly needs to rest. I thank God for her yes. and her family Amen. and for my all family. Because I tell you, God allows the Holy Spirit brings back to my remembrance the things that y'all shared with me and the things I've seen through my life as I'm going through my day. And it helps me to stay connected and having the willingness to stay connected and reach for God in a greater way. And I do love y'all. I'm going to go to the throne and ask God to continue to be with us and for him to grace me with the ability to deliver this message he has prepared for us through me this day. Amen? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I truly love you. There is no one greater than you in all the worlds, heavens and earth, cosmos and universe. 
You are the greatest, Lord God. To me, you are, I am that I am. So many times in my life, I've seen so. I thank you for your magnificence, your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to reach this point in time. I thank you for all the things you have brought this house through. I thank you for the leadership of this house and for the pastor that you have over this house, Lord God. I thank you for that, Lord God. And I don't take it lightly, Lord God. And I know it's only because of you. And I give you honor and glory and praise for that because that allows me to receive more of you and apply it to my life and have the opportunity to share the gospel in a greater way, Lord God. I thank you for that, Lord God. I thank you that you allow us, Heavenly Father, to draw nearer to you. You allow us to get better in you. You allow us to learn of you. You allow us to give back to you what you already given us. And you allow us to be a part of you taking care of what you need to do for us all. I thank you for that, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, to allow me to bring forth the message you have given me in a way that it will continue to produce fruit, Lord God. Continue to equip the body of Christ for ministry, Lord God, and continue, Lord God, to reach the lost, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that people will be, continue to be saved, Lord God, through the deliverance of your message and by us that we go forth with it, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that we will repent and we will deliver and give the things that will encourage us all to repent and come running back to you, Lord God. I ask that you will allow us to remember the cross as we go forward doing so. I ask that you will continue to forgive us, Lord God. For it's only because of your mercy and your grace that we are here, Lord God. I ask all this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Living Hope is the title of this message. And it's from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 6, then verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 3 through 6, then verse 13. I ask that um, we will follow the reading from the screen or by your devices or your book, whichever is comfortable for you. And those who are willing and able to please stand with me. Amen? All right. Praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, fade. Or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Verse 13, be holy. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. 
Amen. Amen. Ends may be seated. Now, First Peter is addressed to Christians who are scattered over a wide area. Peter gives God's encouragement to those suffering persecution for their allegiance to Jesus Christ to live exemplaries, that is, serving as desirable models, representing the best of his kind, life within their culture, that is, they share a common faith for Christmas, Christians everywhere and face common problems. Their basic problem is to live for God in the midst of a society ignorant to the true God. Now that was way back then. And we see the same this day. And it is even getting even more chaotic. Now, verse 3, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, this recites God has done, what God has done and is expressing worship and honor of him. Now, the emphasis is on God's mercy, not his wrath. Now, we have to remember none of us can call God account for what he does, but he does not exercise his freedom or choice without restraint in his use, use of authority. So we have to accept God is all power. He can do what he chooses to do. And we have to accept that and we have to see how he restrains from this dealing with us as he should. Now, we have to remember these things. Now, because God has all power, we have to remember that, and he shows great patience even towards the objects of his wrath, which is us. Now, taking that into account, the purpose of such patience brings about repentance because of God's mercy. Now, this allows us to reach out to God through repentance because we are in the mix of living in a world that is falling, falling away from God and as well is being more and more ignorant to the God who created the heavens and the earth. But nevertheless, God restrains his own self from his own wrath that he could put upon us by his mercy so that we can have repentance. Sometimes we have to just stop and take a look and reveal what's really going on around us, inside us. Amen? And you also have to do this through prayer, seeking, searching, studying, coming to God as well. This is not a solo act. Because number one, you're not down here by yourself. And you did not create yourself. So you have to keep those things in your mind as you move forward in your life. Salvation is not achieved by our effort, human effort, okay? Or our merit, but comes from God's mercy alone. Now in Ephesians uh, verses 8 and 9, this is what it says, chapter 2. For it is by grace you have been saved to faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works 
so that no one can boast. See, these things are what the Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance when we are engaged in our daily lives, when the world is attacking us with the ignorance of the mentality that God is not real or God don't exist or God didn't do this. But nevertheless, if you indulge in God's word, the Holy Spirit will bring that back to your remembrance by discernment and you can apply God's word to what it is is not of God. Okay? <laughs> Man, God's powerful. Now, in God's grace, in God's great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. A reference to new birth of which baptism, among other things, is a sign. Okay, it cannot mean that baptism is necessary for regeneration since the New Testament plainly teaches that the new birth is an act of God's spirit, is not effect or achieved by works, even ones as important as baptism. So baptism is important. It's an outward showing. But we have to realize that it takes the spirit of God to consecrate, to make it whole. Now, new birth and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit are central to the gospel message. Now, in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, this is what it says. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So it is important that we see the third person and respect the third person of the Trinity. If you remember last week, Pastor LaVelle was touching on that a little bit. Now, he saves us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. New birth, in spite of the freaking suffering and persecution mentioned in his letter that Paul has written in verse 6, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial. God has given new birth, born again, both meanings are consecrated with, uh, consists with Jesus, redeeming work, and both are important emphasis in the gospel. Now John chapter 1 verses 12, 13. Yet to you who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, dissension, dissension, or a human will but born of God. See, understanding the spirit of God and God's power and God having all authority and all power, accepting that we need to ask God for discernment and all those things and a greater understanding helps us to stay standing still in God and helps us get a greater belief in knowing that God is God. Now, born again, born of God, that is children of God, have been given 
a new openness to a relationship with God that was not theirs as a result of their natural birth. Now, you didn't get nothing of God by your natural birth by worldly actions. This is all an act of God. Jesus replied in verse 3 of John chapter 3, Verily, truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Verse 4, how can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. You see? This is where the living hope starts to come to the surface. When we have a greater understanding of that. Now, born of water and spirit, a phrase understood in various ways. One, it means the cleansing power of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is sovereign. He works as he pleases in renewal of human hearts. Now, John chapter 3, verse 8, this is what it reads. The winds blow wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now sometimes you have to slow down and stop and just think about that for a moment. Do you actually know where the wind comes? You feel it. You even hear it. But you still yet do not know where it comes from. So when you look upon the spirit of God, you have to illustrate it in the same manner. It's something that you cannot hold, grasp, but you know it exists. That's how we have to look at the Trinity, God. You know God moves in a mighty way. You can't see him but you know he's there. So when you look at the wind as an illustration and you know it's of God, why? Because it says so in the word. This gives us a greater comfort in holding still in the salvation of the Lord. Now, Water refers to baptism, that of John, or that of Jesus and his disciples. Now, in John 1, chapter 1, verse 31, this is what it says. Myself, I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Now, that's Christ. Now, this is just giving us a stern understanding when we are dealing with death, burial, and resurrection and Christ in our life and in the indwelling of the Spirit. Now, in John chapter 3, verses 3 to 7, this is what it says. Jesus replied, Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Who can, how can someone be born again if they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh, 
but spare gives birth to spirit. Seven reads, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Eight, the winds blow wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So this is something that we are not meant to have the complete understanding because our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Neither are our thinking God's thinking. So this allows us to accept things like this through the Holy Spirit. Because when we look at the illustration, we hear the sound of the wind, we cannot see it, we don't know where it goes, but we know it's real because it blew us across the room or blew something off our head. We know it's real. So the Holy Spirit is real. God is real. Christ is real. Amen? So, in spite of all the uh, trials and tribulations that we are experiencing as believers in Christ, followers of God, we still have to maintain an allegiance to our faith that he is who he says he is. How do we know is because the Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance our life experiences and what we put inside of us and the things that we have seen others. This allows God to continue to produce fruit within us so that others can see God in us. When People see God in you. They see the presence of the Holy Spirit. They see the presence of Christ. They see the presence of God. Three, the Trinity. So it's important to monitor your desire to stay at work and seeking our Lord. Now, no one said it's going to be easy, but what good is really easy? Now, through faith and by God's power, they are two sides of the perseverance of Christians. They are shielded one, by God's power, two, by our faith, and that not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace that is what Christ has accomplished as salvation. Now, all this is only because of what Christ has accomplished at salvation. God had a purpose and a plan from the beginning of the world for all this to take place. So that falls into the, the section of our thoughts are not God's thoughts, our thinking is not God's thinking. It's over us. It, you know, it's higher than our thinking. So some things we are just not meant to understand. This is one of those. And when we involve God in our lives and God into everything that we do, when we keep God at the center of our lives, we have to keep that into account in a way that is led by the Spirit of God. See, in order for us to stay on one accord as we do these type of things, we need to continue to engage in the things of God. Now, the Bible speaks of salvation as is by grace alone, and it's based on and, and is based and is not based on human effort, 
but on God's saving plan and the gracious gift of his son before the beginning of time. Now, the Bible speaks of salvation from the beginning. And it was not by human effort. And it still is not by human effort. We can see in society how we as human tear up some things. You know, we put our own twist on God's actions. Why? Is because he gave us free, free will, you know. And, 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 and it just doesn't work. But God knew this from the beginning. And the Bible speaks of all this in salvation, human effort, you know. It, it doesn't make no sense. But on God's saving plan and gracious gift of his son, before the beginning time. See, God still provides salvation through his son. Now, one past, two presents, three future. All these three things deal with God being all-knowing. Amen? Now, Believers' possession of the Holy Spirit is not only evidence of their present salvation, but also pledges of their future inheritance, and not only a pledge, but also the down payment of, their, of that inheritance. Now, that touches on when we accept Christ into our lives and the Holy Spirit is present with us and that and active and that is a down payment on our salvation at the last time. See, this allows us to operate in this society in this time of day in a manner that allows God to equip us to use us and to bring his self honor and glory through our actions because we are saved and we know that we are saved and we know that we have salvation and we do that through a living hope that by our faith everything is going to be as God said. How do we know? It's because we see it within ourselves and within others what God has done for ourselves already. Because each of us knows that God brought us out of so many circumstances and situations that it was only an act of God. It was only by his grace and mercy. And, it, you know, and when we look upon the things that we are involved with now that's coming at us, we can take our down payment and apply that to that and know that we're going to be all right like he brought us through the last time, he will do the same this time. How do we know? Because he said so in his word. You know, we have an inheritance. We are God's people. He chose us. He picked us. He saved us. So we have to apply that in a living hope and, and, and move forward with everything that we are involved in in a way that we know because of salvation, we can move forward and the things that God has set for this house of Mount Olive or forever other things that we are doing that God is leading us through. If we apply these things that he has given us, we can be more than conquerors. Now, it's going to be a challenge, of course. But by the Holy Spirit, it is possible. Why? Because God said so. Now, we produce fruit. And the way we produce good and positive fruit is by allowing God to work within us to 
lead us and guide us and be submissive to him. And God will direct us in those things that we need to do. Now, God's plan for, God's plan to save the lost sinner was made in eternity past as well. So when we take action, we are on the battlefield for the Lord. We are given a purpose and a plan. We are disciples. We are supposed to go out and seek the lost, disciples, save, and equip the body of Christ for ministry. So within all that, we are in God's plan. God is going to use us, but God cannot use us if we doubt our salvation, if we doubt God's power, if we doubt when others tell us we need to study, we need to seek God, we doubt those type of things, then God cannot use us, then we can't be effective in his purpose and his plan. So in verse 13, it says, therefore, with minds that are sober, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Now with minds that are alert, that means you have to seek God, you have to talk to God, you have to study God, you have to sing and shout, you have to draw near to God. You have to engage in the things that you know and how you know is because the Spirit of God is inside you. It will let you know when you're drawing near to God. And it will let you know when you are being hard-hearted, stiff and necked. He'll let you know those things. And you won't have no problem with submitting to the leading of the Spirit. Now, all that fine, you know, falls into the part, you know, get yourself ready. This is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1, verse 17. Get yourself ready, stand up, and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. See, God is sending us disciples out. So we have to do so with minds that are alert ready, ready to set out with the hope and the knowledge and the mercy that God will be with us. We have to set out and set forward and start moving towards God and things he has called us to do. So get yourself ready, stand up, say to them, what, say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. And we all know we don't want the fear, or the, uh, not the fear, but the wrath of God upon us. Here it is a vivid call for spiritual preparation and readiness for action. Set your hope on grace to be brought to you. Finally, the final state of complete blessedness and deliverance from sin. Peter later indicates that a major purpose of this letter is to encourage and testify regarding the true grace of God. See, we're living in a time that is so full of ignorance to God. There's always, or you're always hearing of a new and better way to get to heaven or to draw nearer to God. And it's always not according to the will of God or the word of God. See, get ready. You know, with minds that are alert, you can be shielded from those type of things. Set yourself in the, 
in a position where you are focused, sober. When I mean sober, I'm talking about not drunken by the ignorance of the world. How you do that is by engaging in the things of God. Get ready. Get set. Get ready to go out from these doors because we're living in a world that is ignorant to God. But nevertheless, God still wants none to be lost. He wants all to be saved. So we have a major part in that, to tell the story, to share the gospel, tell our testimony, tell people what God has done for us in a manner that is according to God's will because someone done it for us. It wasn't easy for them, I can imagine, but they was prepared. They got ready. You know, how? I'm assuming by seeking God. So I encourage each of us in here and those who are behind the camera to continue to talk with God, continue to ask him to lead and guide you, to direct us, and continue to praise God for, you know, his grace and his mercy for Christ Jesus. Because the only way this is possible is because of Christ going to the cross and God raising him from the, the dead. That's the only reason why you are able to do anything. So give it back. Give back. Reach out. Now, is anyone here or listening by the camera wants to accept Christ into their lives and wants to rededicate their life, the time you can come forward or you can reach us by phone. For God still saves. There's still yet time. How long time, we don't know. But what is sure and right is this world, this society we live in is in a mindset that is ignorant to the things of God. But nevertheless, we serve a God who is mighty, who is loving, who is willing to save us while there's still yet time. All we have to do is ask, call out, shout. Many of us did at times on our knees when we didn't know which way to go or what was going to be. We called out to God. We shouted. While there's yet still time coming to him, he is willing to save you. He loves us. And this I know. He's carrying me through things. He's putting people in my life that are bridging my stability. And I know it's only by God, and how I know this is only because of the grace of God and because he allowed the Holy Spirit to bring back to my remembrance. Only reason I'm being able to be kept is by God's grace and mercy. Because when this pandemic took my two loved ones it was a challenge. But God kept me through it all. And he put the people in my life. I seen my family function in 
a way that I knew it was only the act of God, the presence of God, you know? Because you know how our folks get when you're dealing with property and money and all those things. You know how folks get, right? But it was nothing but the peace of God. And this, where I was able to see the presence of the Holy Spirit. So going through all these type of things, this allowed me to see everything that I've been learning in the Word of God come more, you know, come more to me. Now, it's in, in my church family. But God does not treat any of us different. The same he does for me, I know he does for you. As he keeps me, I know he keeps you. You know, I, I just keep pressing forward. You know, just keep moving forward in God, you know, because it is what it is, but I know who is greater than all that. Huh? That's all I can do. I'll, I just go ahead and do the best that I can. Even when I was preparing this sermon, when God gave it to me, Weeks ago, it, and as I was going, it, it was a lot of information in it. And with everything else going on, but I just kept moving forward, kept talking to God, and he brought me through. You know, it's only by his grace and his mercy. You know, it's, you know, I'm experiencing, I'm by myself in a home, it's just me. No help. I mean, I got help. You know, maybe somebody help me. But not like it used to be. It's a lot of weight. But God still supply, supplies all my needs. I'm all right. I, I, still don't, I still don't do what I used to do. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still in the, in the position where I can hear God. You know what I mean? I ask God to continue to touch my senses. You heard Pastor preach that last week, and that's one of my things that stay on my, you know. And I, I thank God, you know, because I know it's getting better because I know there's a war that is coming. You know, when Christ Jesus cracks that sky, you know, I can only, as long, long as I'm doing what I can, doing the best I can, God, God is, you know, God is mighty merciful. He's, he, he's great. I love y'all, and um, we're going to close in prayer. And once again, if anyone wishes to rededicate their life, accept Christ into their life, or just want to talk, please see one of the leaderships of this house or give a call. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. There, heavenly and almighty and oh blessed heavenly Father, we truly thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your keeping, loving, and merciful presence. We ask you, Lord God, to be with us and go with us as we go outside of these doors, Lord God. Allow us to continue to be the disciples you have called us to be. We ask you, Lord God, to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to dwell within us. We ask you, Lord God, to please continue to allow us to remember Christ's resurrection and his willingness. And by your willingness, allow us to be that it is. Allow us to remember that, Lord God. Allow us to remember that it is by your power your safety, and your protection, that we can do what it is you have us to do. You will never leave us or forsake us, Lord God. Allow us to remember those things. And please continue to forgive us and be with us. In the name of your mighty son, Jesus, amen. amen. Thank <laughs> you.